So now I'm going to do another um, consequence of what we've done so far. Okay. There are different ways you could arrive at this result, but I feel that this is as good a time as any to uh, show you this one way of looking at this result. Um, we're not going to use it right now, um, but I do want to bring it to your attention because it's important. And just, you know, just to show you like how it'll help, how what we've done will help us think about it. Okay. What we have seen is that if we have an angle, like let's say this is my angle. Okay. We have seen that if I put the super, put the x, y axis on it like this, right? And I put my unit circle, right? And then I can find, right, the x, y coordinates that correspond to, in other words, the sine of this angle. Let's say this is um, angle theta. So in fact, now we actually know more, right? We don't have to label this intersection point as x, y. We can, in fact, since we're assuming this is a unit circle, okay? We can, in fact, say that the x coordinate is the sine of theta. And we can, I mean, I'm sorry, not the x coordinate, the y coordinate. The x coordinate is the cosine of theta. Sorry about that. Right, so we know that the x coordinate is the cosine of theta. We know that the sine of theta is the y coordinate of this intersection point. Again, this is a unit circle, that is to say a circle of unit radius. Um, we have the angle in standard position. And so those inter the, the intersection point, the x coordinate is the cosine of theta, the y coordinate is the sine of theta. And again, we remember from the way we looked at this that we got this because we dropped this perpendicular and we looked at this triangle. Okay, so let me blow the triangle up here because it's going to let us look at something more carefully. Okay. So this is theta right here. You see what I'm saying? And this is my... Uh, this is the foot of my perpendicular right here. And we know that this hypotenuse has length one, again, because it's a unit circle. This is just a magnification of that picture. It's like I'm looking at it with magnifying glass, okay? The x coordinate is cosine theta, so that means the length of this side is cosine theta, right? And the y coordinate is sine theta, so that means this height has length sine theta. And so here, we're gonna remember one of the famous theorems of geometry, and we're gonna put it to some use. So we know the Pythagorean theorem. In a right triangle with legs A and B and hypotenuse C, we have that the square, the sum of the squares of the legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. Right, so A squared plus B squared, where A and B are the legs, when you square them and add them, that's the same as the C squared. Look at this triangle. This is a right triangle. One of the legs has length cosine theta, the other leg has length sine theta, and the hypotenuse has length one. So, what the Pythagorean theorem tells us, because this is the right triangle, the Pythagorean theorem holds, what it, what it means here is that if I take the cosine of theta, okay, and I square that number, and I add it to the square of the sine theta, okay, that will equal to one squared, right? The sum of the squares of the legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. That's what this is, okay? Now, here, I'm going to make a notation, okay? Whenever you see sine theta squared, we're going to use this shorthand, and you'll see this in any trick book you, you see, you'll see that that is actually written as sine squared theta, okay? So that's a shorthand for this, okay? So this relationship, what is one squared? One squared is one times one, so it's just one, okay? The cosine theta squared, that's gonna be written as cosine squared theta plus, and this will be written as sine squared theta. And so here, we have an identity that is satisfied by the trigonometric function sine and cosine. And this is known as, this is one of the identities known as the Pythagorean identities. And now you can see why it's called that. Because it's a restatement of the Pythagorean theorem 
in turn, uh, or it's not a restatement of because it's not as general as the Pythagorean theorem, but the Pythagorean theorem directly applied to this triangle, which corresponds to the situation at hand, gives us this identity. Okay. And you might say, well, David, does that apply anywhere in the unit circle? And in fact, it does. If you want to imagine, for example, that the terminal side was over here, okay, then we would drop this perpendicular, okay, we would have this right triangle, and you can see that in this right triangle here, that hypotenuse still has length one, that would be the cosine, or at least that would have the magnitude of the cosine, the cosine would actually be negative, of course, this side length would also have, the, would have the magnitude of the sine, in this case it would still be positive, but you can see that because we apply the Pythagorean theorem to there, and it would still give us this result. Same thing with with the uh, same thing, no matter where the terminal side is on the unit circle. And so I wanted to show this consequence to you here, um, because I felt that because we had assigned the hypotenuse to be one, it would be the easiest way to see this result. But that's not necessary, and there are other ways you can derive this identity. But I felt that here it was easiest, cleanest, nicest, and so on, and to show it here. Okay, thank you. We'll use this a lot later, and uh, but thank you, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.